stand with us in reverence to the reading of the infallible Word of God. Romans chapter 5, begin with verse 1, if correctly reading reads like this. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope Make it not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us Amen. in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. Amen. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Amen. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Now, this verse is where we're going to get our text. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. by whom we have now received the atonement. You may be seated. I want to preach to you on the atonement. This is the only place in the New Testament you find the word atonement mentioned several times in the Old Testament starting out uh, uh, you see it a lot in Exodus and, uh, uh, Leviticus and different places but uh, only one time now this word atonement Comes from the word at one -ment, meaning at one with God, or a covering. The word atonement means to cover. So I want you to write that down because we're going to come back to that many times. And this message is probably going, I'll probably preach. Uh, uh, start this morning and try to finish it up tonight but many times we're going to go back to that definition of atonement the covering so write that down and remember it now the first point is this the origin of the atonement like I told you just now originated in the Old Testament when the priest would go and make sacrifice on the day of atonement. And uh, uh, from the beginning of time, people offered sacrifices. Whether, uh, and it wasn't just uh, godly people that offered sacrifices, but you find it that uh, 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 even 
uh, even the ungodly offered sacrifices to their gods. So the offering of sacrifice has been something from the beginning of time that not only godly people did, but even the ungodly made sacrifices. But when we think about the atonement, uh, we think about uh, in Exodus uh, 29 and 37 is where we first uh, see that uh, uh, that God told Aaron and the priest to go in and to offer the sacrifice of atonement. And what they would do is they would kill the ram or the bullock and they would take that blood and they would put it on the hands of the priest. The priest first would put it on his head, put it all, uh, 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 and then he would take that blood in his hand and he would take it and he would cover the horns of that ram with that blood before he killed that sacrifice. Now, when we think about, uh, you know, a lot of people, the people don't like to hear you preach on the blood because, uh, <laughs> you know, I've heard people say that us Baptists have a bloody religion. Yeah, we do. Because it's through the blood that we're saved and we know that. And that's the only way that we're saved. Right. But I want us to look at it uh, through uh, some different eyes today. And I want us to try to understand. I, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is this. I want us to understand what the atonement really is. Right. Right. And so uh, I guess the first thing we'd want to look at is the reason for atonement, wouldn't we? Why do we have atonement? There's not but one reason for atonement, mm -hmm. and that's sin. Yes, sin is the reason for atonement. Amen. See, sin separated us from God. Right. Atonement, or at one with God. For us to be at one with God, God can't look on that sin uh, in our life. He can't... Uh, when he looks at us and we got sin in our life, he, hey, he can't look on us. God hates sin. Hates it so bad that he won't even look on it. So when we have sin in our life, unforgiven sin, and we just keep building that sin on sin on sin on sin, then we get separated from God. When we're separated from God, I'm not, uh, you know, uh, the Bible said, for the wages of sin is death. Amen. Was he talking about a physical death? No. 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 He was talking about a spiritual death. The word death means to be separated from. Right. So what he was talking about was our sins separate us. He even said, your sins have separated you from God. Uh, Susan was talking about uh, the last night, her and uh, uh, we were talking about uh, sin and how that the Bible taught us that sin was passed on from one generation to the next. And uh, the, the Bible even talks about the sins of the fathers being handed down three generations. The fact is, sin has been handed down since the first man. Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden. And when he sinned in the Garden of Eden, he pronounced a sentence of death upon every one of us. We got to physically die, but the most important thing I want you to understand here is not the physical death we're talking about, but the spiritual death. Yeah. The Bible, you know, God had warned Adam, the day you eat it, Adam, you're going to die. Right. Right. Well, we know that Adam physically lived long after that. Right. 
But the day that Adam sinned, God ran him out of the Garden of Eden, out of his presence. Adam died because he was separated from God. When we have sin in our life, it brings death on us. And we're separated from God. You can't be at one with God with sin continually in your life. Amen. We wonder why our prayers are hindered. I'll answer that for you. It's because of sin in our life. When you get down to praying, the Bible said that we have an advocate with the Father, Christ Jesus. Amen. We know that He's ever present at the throne and He's ever listening to our prayers. But when we have sin, unconfessed sin in our life, and uh, we kneel down to pray, uh, uh, brother God, don't hear that because, hey, he's not listening. Uh, the only thing he's listening for is please forgive me. Yeah. Sin has you separated. Amen. Right. Your prayer life, you don't have one. Your study life, not there. <laughs> Boy, well, preacher, I study my Bible every day, whether I sin or whether I don't. The Bible said this word is spiritually written and therefore must be spiritually discerned. If you've got sin in your life and you're sitting there trying to read it like a Sears and Roebuck catalog, you'll never understand what you read. I'm here to tell you the first thing we need to do before we go into the precious book of God is we need to examine ourselves. If we have sin in our life, we need to go to God and ask God the what? Cover! Make an atonement! Cover that sin! Amen. Amen. It's in our life. Amen. So that we can understand this blessed book. Right. You know, the thing that's always amazed me is folks, I reckon think you got to kill somebody to have sin in your life. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> no. That's the reason he said, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. That little sin in our life that we just want to hang on to. And every one of us has it. Every man, woman, boy, and girl, we're prone to sin. You say you're without sin, the Bible said you're a liar. That's right. <laughs> For all have sinned and what? Come short of the glory of God. Why did he put that come short of the glory of God? You can't walk with God with sin in your life. So therefore you come short of that walk with God that you should have. You can't be the witness that you should be. It may take me a week to preach it. You can't be the witness that you should be with sin in your life. Your witness becomes ineffective. <coughs> For two reasons. One is those that see your life and see that sin in your life have no confidence in you. And two, to have an effective witness, you've got to be led by the Holy Spirit of God. Listen, uh, when we witness or whatever we do, it needs to be through the leadership of the Holy Ghost yeah. of God. And if, hey, if we've got sin in our life, hey, we don't have that relationship with the Holy Ghost of God. Therefore, we don't have that leadership leading us where we are to go to witness, to who we are to go to witness, and how we are to witness. Hey, we just are not effective. Amen. Amen. Why? Because of sin mm -hmm. in our life. He said the first man out of sin. 
And he passed it on to every generation following him. To all of mankind. We have that sin. We have that urge to sin. So, preacher, I don't have that urge. Bless you. You've been deceived. Because you do have an urge to sin. Whether it be eating too much. Uh, hey. Boy, that gets me. Eating things we shouldn't eat. Bob, when you know you ain't supposed to eat that cake and you eat it, it's sin. I know it. I know it. Amen. Hey, when I know I ain't supposed to smoke that cigarette and I do, I know it's sin. Every one of us have something in our life that causes us to sin. That's right. And you may you may try to cover it up and say, no, I haven't, but yes, you have. That's yeah, right. That's right. Some of us let our children cause us to sin. Mm. Oh, <laughs> Richard, don't tell me that. Hey, when your right. children hinder you from doing what you ought to do for God, they're causing you to sin. And that, hey, let's face a lot of folks' children are there. Uh, that's the main thing that uh, that keeps them away from God. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do what my kids want to do. Go ahead. You better be doing what God wants you to do. Yes. Right. <laughs> Ain't none of you love your kids or your grandkids no more than I do. I don't get to see mine much, but I still love them. That's right. And what if I got up on Sunday morning and said, well, I don't think I'll go to church this morning. I think I'll go spend time with my grandkids. I wouldn't be here long. Y'all would be running me off about the third Sunday, wouldn't you? When you come in, there wasn't nobody to fill the stand because the preacher was all playing with the kids. You ain't no better than I am. That's right. Amen. Your place is here right. in this church. Amen. And if you let your kids keep you out of church, you have sin. That's right. That's right. Amen? Amen. So all of us have something that causes us to sin. Lust, when it is conceived, <coughs> bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it's finished, bringeth bring it forth death. death. Well, preacher, how do I get past that sin? How do I, how do I function as a child of God? How can I walk with God? How can I have a Christian walk in this day that I'm living in? Uh, uh, the way you're talking, it sounds like it's impossible. No, it's not. Right. It's through the atonement that we can walk with God. Thank you, uh -huh. Jesus. Amen. That covering of our sin. Mm -hmm. When God covers it, He can He can look on you then. Amen. If that sin is under the blood, even though we've sinned. It's still covered by the blood. All right, I got to move on. Or I'll be here all day. Like I told you, the meaning of the word in Hebrew, the word atonement is to cover up. The very first occurrence of atonement you know where it was found? In the ark. What did God tell Noah? He said, I want you to pitch it within and without. I want you to take your family in. And when he took his family in, he didn't shut the door, did he? God shut the door. Making a covering for Noah's sin. To escape the judgment that was out there that was placed on the whole world, 
God put Noah in an ark, so that was a form of atonement, wasn't it? He covered his sin with that ark so God couldn't see it. Amen. Noah had sin. His children had sin. But yet he was saved, wasn't he? Yeah. By the atonement, by the ark covering his sin, pitched within and without. God covered it inside and out. Amen. Then you go on, you find examples of atonement. Uh, Jacob. You remember how he done Esau? Just tricked him out of his inheritance, didn't he? Done him wrong. But then there come a time when Jacob needed to make things right with Esau. You remember reading about what happened? When Jacob started out to see Esau, he sent him a present. And with that present, he sent him a covering for his face. <laughs> There's that word to cover again. Well, preacher, where do you see atonement in that? By right, Esau had the right to kill Jacob. He stole his birthright, so he had the right to kill him. But when old Esau put that covering over his face, he couldn't see nothing. He couldn't see. Oh, Jacob, all he could do was hear his voice saying, forgive me, brother, for what I've done. Yeah. Now, covering. That's what atonement is. All down through the Bible, you find where God gave coverings. You know the most important place that you find it? In the Ark of the Covenant. If you remember that Ark of the Covenant it contained the showbread, it contained a lot of things but it also contained <coughs> the tablets of the law. The very law that brought man to sin, that let man know that he had sin in his life. Right. The law that condemned him. But God designed a mercy seat. Amen. Oh God help you to see this today. You know where that mercy seat was set? It was set right in front of those tablets that kept the tablets hid from the congregation when they come in. That priest would come in and he would take that blood before he had entered into the tabernacle to offer the sin, uh, the sacrifice for the sins of the people, he would take that blood offering and he would sprinkle it as he went in before and upon the mercy seat. That mercy seat was covered to tablets that said you got to die. That mercy seat where the tablet said death, the mercy seat said life. Amen. And it covered those tablets. It, kept, woo, it saved the lives of those men and women in, uh, of Israel that had sinned against God. Amen. Amen. That mercy seat covered the tablet. Oh, I thank God for that mercy seat. I don't know about you. Amen. Why, preacher? Because I read in Hebrews where he said, my high priest entered in 
not without blood, but he carried his own blood into that tabernacle in heaven that's made just like the tabernacle they carried around in Israel that has the law behind it that said I should die. Oh, but there's that mercy seat that's in front of it that's sprinkled with the blood of my blessed Redeemer and that covers my sin and may give me justification how to be in heaven. Oh, hallelujah, makes me an heir and a joint heir with Christ and it's because of what? The atonement. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. It's because of that blessed atonement. <coughs> now I want you to notice. The source of the atonement, Hebrews 10 and 4. For it's not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Okay. Romans 3, 23 through 25. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being freely justified, being justified freely by His grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Oh, I thank God for that source of atonement, don't you? God made that source of atonement for you and me. Through the mighty hand of God, yeah. we have atonement. Now, I want you to notice this. The, found, uh, the foundation of the atonement. Preacher, what are you talking about? Hey, uh, everything has to have a foundation. Atonement had a foundation too. Where was it, preacher? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish Man. but have everlasting life. Oh, hallelujah. Love was the foundation for the atonement through his love for us. Hallelujah. He made that atonement possible for you The Bible said, for God said in the next verse, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Oh, that atonement of that foundation was love. Oh, God loved us so much. We, you know, we, uh, we have... I, I guess people talk about that word love more than any other word uh, today. But they've got it all mixed up. There's a lot of folks that mix lust up with love. Yeah. See, lust, when it's conceived, brings forth sin. Oh, but perfect love cast out all fear. Don't it now? Yeah. Woo! There's a difference in love and lust. If you love somebody, you accept them, good or bad. Yeah. See, God went and loved me enough that He accepted me, knowing that I had bad, knowing that I there wasn't nothing much good about me. Amen. But He still loved me. That's right. Amen. We talked about our kids a while ago. You mamas love them kids. They may be sorry as the devil, but you love them. Everybody else may see that sorriness in them, but mama's blind into it. Yeah. The whole world can see it, but mama can't. 
everybody else may see the sorriness in us. <laughs> but God's love blinds him too <laughs> because of that blessed atonement that's been made for you and for me. Hallelujah. His love carried. That song we sang, love lifted me. When I was in danger, love lifted me. Amen. Souls in danger, look above. Jesus completely saved. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. Oh, let me tell you something. That love of God will lift us up out of sin when nothing else will. We talk about winning folks to God. If we win them to God, it'll be through love. If we don't win them through love, we'll never win them because there's nothing else. They can't win them. That love lifts us up out of that angry way. He's the master of the sea. Builds his will obey. He your savior wants to be. Be saved today. And then he goes in the love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Oh, let me tell you something. I went, I, you know, when uh, folks had come up to me, I remember when I'd be I was out there in sin, acting a fool, cutting up, and I, somebody would come up to me, and I've had them come up to me and scold me, and that turned me off. If you want to turn a sinner off, you go scolding him about the ways he's living. But when somebody like old Peggy Griffin, they never been a saint of God. Oh, Peggy was a saint. She's going home to be with the Lord now. But every time Peggy seen me, she said, you know, I love you. Oh, what are you going to say when somebody comes up to you and says, I love you? Right. All you do is drop that head and go on about your business. Listen, I knew how sorry I was, I didn't have to be told that. Right. I knew about all that sin in my life. God done convicted me of that. I, I, I didn't have to be told about that. Right. But when people got to telling me about how much they loved me, how much God loved me, yeah. oh brother, there's something. It just, uh, hey, it just tore down all them walls that I built up, all that defense that Satan had given me to yeah. resist the word of God. It tore down that defense and it opened up uh, the way for the word of God to get into my heart. Yeah. Oh, we need love in this world. Amen. Amen. But he say love is not easily puffed up. Vaulted not itself or don't praise itself. Paul said whether there be tongues they'll cease. Prophecies will cease. All these things one day will cease. But the one thing that's going to remain is that love of God will remain when everything else is gone. Amen. That love that God has for mankind, it'll be there when everything else has failed. Amen. Love will work. Amen. The method of atonement. That's simple, isn't it? The method is the blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Amen. The method that God chose to atone my sins and yours was blood. I'm told that on the Day of Atonement, when the priests were in there making sacrifices for the sins of the people, 
that the blood would run down the street that would turn the river red where it would run in, or the blood would run in and the whole river would just turn red with blood. God looked down one day and he saw that river running red with blood. And he realized that he couldn't create enough goats. He couldn't create enough bullocks. Right. They just wouldn't be enough to atone for man's sin. With just Israel's sin, the river run red with blood. Can you imagine? The sins of the whole world yeah. having to be atoned. There could never have been enough goats, bullets, calves. Come to me in. God said, I've got to do this once and for all. I've got to answer the question that the whole world wants to know. And that is the essence of atonement. said, I know what I'll do. I'll go myself. Only a righteous God, a sinless God, could become the atonement for our sins. So he came to earth. And he found a little old virgin down there named Mary. And he moved upon Mary. Amen. And Mary conceived of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And she brought forth a son named Jesus. That son was God. Yes. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God, and he became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. Amen. I like it, don't you? Amen. He is the essence of our atonement. Yeah. It's not about me and it's not about you, but it's about him. It's about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is the atonement. Amen. The very essence of the word atonement. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, went to a cruel cross on a hill called Calvary, shed his blood there as an atonement for your sins and for mine. Mm -hmm. We read where he said, for the remission of sins. That word remission goes right back to atonement. To remit means to cover up or to do away with, to get rid of, to take it out of God's sight. I'm glad that he is that atonement for me and for you today. Right. The world hates him. You mention the name Jesus, folks don't want to hear it no more. Mm -hmm. As talking about in Sunday school, one third of uh, 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 the world today is Christians, just one third. And then you take out of that, they classify Catholics as Christians. So the Catholic Church is counted into that Christian church. If you took the Catholic Church out, that wouldn't leave many Christians, would it? Uh -huh. And then there's other churches that, uh, I won't get into that. <laughs> but how many real churches do we have today? How many real, genuine Christians are they in this world today? It's not God's fault. No. He sent the very best heaven had to offer. Amen. Right. 
He suffered the death mm. of a servant yeah. for you and me. Mm. Okay. Was buried in a barred tomb. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but on that third day, hey. hallelujah, God called his son from that grave. Yeah. He came forth alive. I get close to this Easter season now, this can't hardly stand me. Yeah. But I get to thinking about that resurrection. Oh, yeah. oh listen. His death saved me. Amen. It gave me that atonement for my sins. Yeah. Oh, but that resurrection, when I think about that, the Bible said, Him being the first fruits of the resurrection, we shall also be raised in like manner. Oh, yeah. Preacher, what that did give me hope. Yeah. And one day after a while, I'd get to enjoy everything that heaven has to offer. Man. The atonement. I hope I helped you to understand it a little yeah, better today than you did. Yeah. Jesus is our atonement, folks. And without that atonement, we'd all be in hell today with our back broken. Amen. That's right. He's our covering. He covered all of our sins so that I could come in the presence of an almighty God. Amen. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. That I that today, because of him, that we can walk right into the presence of God through him. Oh, set at the right hand of God. Amen. Whoa! By goodness gracious, that ought to make the shout on the house. To know that Almighty God allows us yeah. to walk into his presence. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you today yes. for allowing me to preach this message to our folk. Lord, I pray that you'd take this message and that you'd bless it. God, would you use it to help us all to understand that you are our atonement. And it's through you and through your precious blood that we can have access to the throne of God. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. Father, now we ask this, we give this song of invitation. Would you stir the hearts, Lord? Father, we ask that the Holy Spirit would move on us. Father, would you just help us to mind you today? In Jesus' name.